mean, look, what you've done, first of all, Gavin, is, is incredible. Um, I'm not saying that lightly because, you know, you know, and I know, yeah. you know, trying as a, when you're looking to, to, I suppose, try and have a baby with your partner, your wife or whoever it may be. And, you know, to be told quite bluntly and what I read from your story as well is you were told very bluntly, that's it, good luck. Um, and Deborah and I, our journey was extremely similar. You know, we we uh, were going out for 12, 13 years. We got married in 2007. And um, so we actively started trying and it just wasn't happening. So six, nine months later, probably nine months to be honest, we said, look, we better get tested. Um, and a very close person to Deborah, his midwife said, look, I think you need to, to look at this. So we went to a fertility clinic in Dublin in Ireland and uh, got the usual tests. So Deborah got her tests done. I got sperm analysis done. And then they went, now Mark, you have a low sperm count. You won't conceive naturally. You need to go to ICSI. You know, hang on a second. So all of a sudden, we were thrown into this world of, as as you know well, like infertility or what we call now, we want to be more positive, fertility. Yeah. And uh, to know what we were doing. So you literally, we literally, the first, you know, cycle, fresh cycle we stayed with that clinic and uh we just threw all our efforts and and money and emotion and prayers and everything behind science the only way i was i was existing and i was i was existing for deborah i wasn't kind of coming to terms with what the issues i had and the one what people think is a small function in the you know a reproductive cycle and to get a one pregnant is a man's sperm and you just think it's click your fingers like that, just no problem, and it's done. And then you you look after. Did you uh, struggle in those social gatherings? I know I yeah. early yeah. early days I used to avoid christenings, weddings, whatever I could, mate, just to avoid that. Like, oh, you you be next, you be next. I remember sitting down with with uh, Deborah's dad at a barbecue down at the parents' house years ago. We were in the midst of going through it, and. I didn't tell any of my friends. So the only people I could confide in is Deborah's parents and my parents. And I told, told uh, Deborah's dad, it doesn't matter what we have to go through, if it's another man's sperm, if it's adoption, whatever. But I said, I will do everything in my power to make sure that your daughter, my wife, will go through pregnancy naturally and feel what her friends and her sisters and people she knows feels. And that was so, I felt a lot better after that because I think I come in my head going, you know, Oh, I need to do this. I need to do that. Um, and it's a stigma around you. Like going back with me, like I remember telling my dad and my and one of my brother and sister, and I think um, they didn't really understand that. I I kind of got that because how were they supposed to understand if I didn't understand? And I go, I I was in denial. Like I was depressed. I was anger. I just like we come from a big family, and it was nothing when you had nothing in the, in the family at all in regards to my situation. So. Uh, Unless you've been on the fertility journey yourself, I think some people don't understand, but things are getting better, I think, Mark. I think over the past six yeah. months, I've seen a lot, like, education's key as well. But, um, and there's a big mass, there's a lot of men speaking up now, which is great to see. And uh, I think going back on the fertility treatment, I think, I think every man would swap places, but mentally, that is a tough journey for us guys as well. Yeah. Watching, it, watching your partners at, having the injections and treatment and you were you sitting in the corner feeling helpless and uh, I, I, I know I know full well you, you probably feel the same Mark. The main feeling I had at the time when Deborah was taking the injections and depositories and all the hormones and steroids being pumped into her um, was two actually two feelings was guilt because I felt it was my fault the reason why because otherwise if I was as I thought in my head if I had the the more sperm. So basically my, my issue was that I had, the first time I did it was I think 1.6 million sperm, right? So I was told in a, in a very direct way, fine, your, your sperm are fine in terms of motility and morphology, no problem. But it's like going, I think they said, it was, you're a rugby man, I, 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 I see, as, <laughs> as am I. It's like having a uh, Alwyn Jones, uh, but one against 15. You might, you could have a brilliant one, we are against 15, so that's why it was kind of, or a Lionel Messi in a team where you're playing against 11 players, you're still going to get destroyed. Um, but it was guilt, it was guilt and shame 
like we said about the clinics earlier, you go into it naive, they tell you, right, you need this, you need that. And realistically, some of it you don't really need. And yeah. it's, it's crazy the money, the money people throw out there, but they tell you to do it. And especially your first sight, you was like, yeah, we love this, we love that. And um, it's, it's a shocking state of affairs, I think, Mark, to be honest. It is. And, and like, at least, I suppose in the UK, at least you have. Yes, you've got, you know, you've got your private, but, you know, for I know, I know the waiting list now because COVID for NHS to get appointments, I think is between 18 months and 20 and two years. But in Ireland, we're now, and I know the UK are outside of Europe, but Ireland are the only country in Europe now not to have even public, any public funding whatsoever for fertility, which is shocking. The one drives me, Mark, is just... I was, I've been on this journey about eight years and uh, I, and I think six years, uh, I think two years ago, I accepted my situation 100%. And I know as men going through these clinics, hundreds of men every day, leaving them clinics, giving, giving a letter or basically saying sperm donor or adoption. And there's the door, like I did, here's the door, Mr. Button. And there's no support there. And it's shocking. And I'm, I'm really passionate on the, like, in the UK, suicide is uh, the biggest killer in the age of men of 50. And even though I can never mm. prove it, I can never prove it. I generally believe some of the fertility issues are due to that, especially the men. Yeah. I've, I've been in support groups and I've spoken to friends and they've all had the feelings, mate, the suicidal thoughts, the anger, the depression. Now, well, look, what, what you're doing, I'll be in rod with that program. And, you know, I just think it's great. I mean, from our point of view, from <clears throat> Newer's point of view, you know, we're about, yes, we're about quality products, but we are about education and community. So, you know, with our new buying women, our female products, uh, look, we only launched last year. Our birthday's going to be in, what, 12 days' time, we'll be a year old. Um, you know, and it's, but it's been tremendous. But the, what, what's been great is not, not about the sales. What's been great is, is about hearing people's journey. So, you know, we give them a lot of, I suppose, free content from our in-house nutritionists, um, from acupuncturists, reflexologists, breathing experts, but linking up with, you know, best fertility now. I believe it's all, it's can about I, spreading the message. And, and that's ask, what it's about. Sorry to interrupt you, Mark. Yeah. Uh, can I just ask for people who, are not, yeah. uh, who will listen to this, can yeah. you um, just describe who new the fertility are and what, what you were about? So new Brian Women is a, I suppose it's a, a fertility supplement with a gut health focus uh, for females or women trying to conceive. So it has all the the good nutrients, vitamins and minerals, but our superheroes are the strengths. And that's the difference. And with our male product, that's the difference because what we're seeing, and you know, we, we, we have some fertility clinics that actually sell our products as, or sell new buying women, is that one in four, now this is either women or men, I.e. couples coming into fertility clinics now have an issue with their gut. So either it's their, their main the gut microbiome or for women, it's the, the vaginal microbiome. For men, it's the gut or believe it or not, there's a sperm microbiome. We're really excited, particularly as was my passionate about the male product. We'll be very open. Everything, just want to say, like with our female, everything we bring out, we would take ourselves. So we firmly believe in stuff that is that has been clinically proven, whether it's COQ10, selenium, vitamin D, whatever, that, that it has to be proven to help some sort for female or male. Um, and uh, it's it, like following that, you know, all our products are, are tested three times, two twice internally, and then we get an external. How can we pay more? But they take a random batch, maybe 5%, and then they look to make sure all the vitamins are there that we say. They're traced to where we said we bought them from and all the strains are there. Um, so what we say on our packaging is exactly correct. Well, we've had great success so far, mate, and uh, I can see it happening with, a, like you said, it's going to be groundbreaking and it's pretty much a game changer and it's pretty much what needs to be out there. I think people are starting to listen now and the men need to be looked after as well. And uh, yeah. I, I generally I believe, I think you'll have a much better outcome because it, it'll, it'll rub off on, on your partner. And uh, I, do, I do believe uh, you will have a better outcome.